to the SSPX podcast. In this fourth episode of our Ongoing Digital Dangers series, we'll explore one of the most dominant aspects of our digital age, social media. Platforms such as Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and X, formerly known as Twitter, allow literally billions of people to share content around the world in seconds. Much of this content is relatively benign. People sharing family photos, updates on major life events, or thoughts on their favorite sports teams and TV shows. However, these platforms also allow for the spread of disinformation, profanity, pornography, and other harmful material on an unprecedented scale. Individuals and entities can mislead users and advance their own causes without concern for the truth. How Catholics, and particularly Catholic parents, should address the ubiquity of social media will be addressed in detail on this fourth episode of Digital Dangers with Father Kopeck. Father, welcome back. We're on episode four now of our series on technology. And because we've been discussing certain principles and certain applications of technology, we're going to focus today on a very specific kind of uh, technology and online activity, and that's social media. So to begin, can you give us your working definition of social media? And, And maybe as part of that, why are you singling out social media? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, by social media, we mean those mostly apps, apps, applications, Mm -hmm. but also because websites, broadly speaking, um, which enable users to quickly and easily and in a way that's usually fun uh, to share content with each other. Mm -hmm. So whether that's, you know, just jokes or videos, um, different links, pictures, and then also to participate in what's called social networking. So basically, you know, groups yeah. communicating with each other through this kind of digital interface. So, um, you know, your, your classic social media apps are going to be Instagram, Snapchat, Tumblr, TikTok, Facebook, WhatsApp, Discord, mm-hmm. etc. And um, they're fun and even like, quote unquote, addictive ways uh, to, you know, to have to enable friends to stay in touch and sure. family and all and all of that. Um, that's basically the sort of thing that we're talking about. Okay. And we're singling out um, social media in particular to talk about because, well, because it's very relevant yep. um, as um, one of the main ways that Internet usage is, is being employed today and especially by the youth, but mm-hmm. definitely not exclusively. And because it's it's so prolific and and so widely used, um, already it has you know some sort of extra bearing on like this whole question of rewiring our brains and how we're okay. using them. But then also because of its moral connotation. So we mentioned last time you know that we're going to be talking about the two big moral questions: um, social media and pornography. And the latter, you know, is obviously a moral question, sure. but um, the former, social media. I mean. We do call this a moral issue for a couple of reasons. That the first would just be, you know, its impact on ourselves, on on how we think, on how we interact with others. Um, that whole question of, you know, kind of allowing ourselves to be rewired in a particular way. Um, that that is a yeah. more morally relevant issue because we're, we're responsible for, you know, what what we allow happen to ourselves, especially sure. the way we think and and things like that. Um, also then in extension to that, the next issue would be, um, its effect, especially on our youth, um, okay. which will kind of attack towards the end. And, um, that's, that's extremely morally relevant because there's a lot of negative effects, um, that come with it, especially for the youth again. And then lastly, because it is a gateway, um, a very obvious gateway to things that are more explicitly I- immoral, like, like pornography or, okay. or things like that. So that's why we're calling it a moral issue in and of itself, not just a question of spending too much time on something. Okay. And I think it might be worth pointing out, um, just again, zooming out for a second, when we think of online activity, depending on our age, we might think of, well, something like email, right? Then that's Mm -hmm. a little bit outdated in the sense of the primary way that people use their time online. By our age, what do you mean? (laughs) Well, ages aside, um, you know, the other thing is that even web browsing, <clears throat> excuse me, is a little out of date at this point, right? That I mean, right. it's still something that's done, but depending on what statistics you look at, um, social media use is the primary way and over by time, usually by some studies, the overwhelmingly uh, predominant way or the, the method by which people are are living online, right. whatever that is they're doing. So, right, because they're I mean, designed to be that way. They are, right, and to, that, and you know, I think the positive qualities are probably as limited as you just mentioned. You know, yes, you can stay in touch with family. Yes, you can stay in touch with friends, and that's all to the good. 
But le- for the sake of this podcast, I think we're assuming that whatever positive qualities there are are known. Right. So, um, yeah, I think that's we're not going to spend a lot of time. I think on the, the yeah. we're not in the business here. I think of convincing people there are positive qualities to social media. So, um, what to you is the most? What's the most important negative quality, or how do you categorize the negative qualities spe- like of, of social media in particular? Okay. Well, before I don't, I guess. T- that which is the most important or the or the greatest negative quality, I guess, remains to be seen. Okay. If we were to kind of list them, I mean, the, sure. there's an addictive quality, there's an influential quality, and then there's the immoral quality. Okay. And we have to kind of examine both, all, all three of those. Definitely okay. the, the immoral one's going to be the most important sure. thing to, to look sure. at. But all of them are, are relevant and all of them are awfully negative. Okay. So... I guess just to start to jump right in with it. Yeah, or? start. I, I mean, depending on the order you want to uh, start, you mentioned addiction. Yeah, you mentioned we'll the, just work. Yeah, we'll work, work our way up from there. Yeah. So a, addictive quality of social media. Um, they are these apps are absolutely uh, designed to be addictive. And this is kind of going back to our, our first yeah. conversation with um, with technology being used to kind of use the reward mechanisms in our brain. Um, so everything from dopamine hits to, you know, the, our ability to form habits um, to keep us going back and um, okay. to keep us to you know, keep us looking, keep us using their things. And again, as far as them being self-sufficient, that that goes all the way to, you know, the, these apps are trying to, um, you know, keep us on them it, it, for every aspect of mm-hmm. our use of, of Internet. So whether that's buying and selling or, or okay. entertainment or information sure. or again, you know, social life. Um, so they're they're ingeniously designed to do so, and there are there are whole teams of people working um, to keep us on them, to to make them addictive. Yeah. And when we say whole teams, I mean we literally, we literally mean thousands of people in some cases, mm-hmm. just just for one app um, to make it as user friendly and addictive as possible. And um, again, this is, is it's completely by design. It's it's something that um, it, it's a it's it's an economic you know, yeah. competition basically, um, to, to keep us on there. And it's, and it's relevant far outside of our circles. So, I mean, even for example, just recently, um, something like 40 States out of the union, um, banded together to sue meta, you know, which is the owner yeah. of most of these, these, the, the main social media applications and for what, well, for intentionally manipulating the use of adolescence, mm. um, in the terms of addiction. Um, to to keep them being used. I mean, that's that's on that's on a government level. That's, sure. that's, it it indicates something. I, I would say so. They're massively addicting, um, and I I think that's worth you know us kind of asking ourselves the question, or at least if, if you know if someone listening has you know um, a social media account and they might be you know checking themselves and as far as far as you know I, well I know I shouldn't be using this too much or I know I'm I'm spending too much time on it and yet it just seems like every time I try and do it less I just end up going right back to it and I yeah. even though I try and spend less time on it I, I end up spending you know still hours a day okay why is that it's it's not just because we're helplessly you know poor willed individuals sure. it's it's because we're dealing with something that on a neurological level is stronger than our ability to regulate it um that's that's the that's the nature of addictive things um so already th- this has to be um you know kind of a clincher how much time have we given mm. you know to these applications and for what and even from what, meaning where's that time coming from? Uh, th- and this is already a pretty legitimate moral question when it comes to just, you know, are we spending too much time? Are we, you know, in some way, even mm-hmm. a little bit addicted to the use of social media? Um, everyone, and perhaps, you know, there's certain certain groups of individuals more than others. I mean, even like people that stay at home more often. Sure. Um, it, they're just in a circumstance to be able to use these things more often. How much time do we give these things instead of our duty? for example, sure. our, our duty of state and especially our family. So uh, time here given to something like social media isn't just time lost. It could very well be time stolen, right. um, time stolen that I need to be, you know, giving to my family the time and attention, which is love. I mean, that's sure. when it comes to children, that's what time and attention is. The love that I'm meant to be giving, you know, to the, to the raising of our children. Can our phone somehow become more important than that? That's this is a more and that's definitely yeah, a moral yeah. question because um, not only does it affect our time, but then 
in the long run, it starts to affect our ability um, to pay good attention and to, to stay focused to our duty of state and to, you know, keep keep order I, in the I house see, and things like that. Two separate questions then. Right, right. Yeah, right. yeah two separate questions. I mean, sort of two effects to the sure. same to the same issue of, of just giving time right. to it, right? But you're laboring under the assumption that, yeah, most of us are not sitting around saying, I have a plethora of free time. Right. So what am I going to do with that? Right. Um, yeah, it's more like I only have so much time, but this, this thing keeps taking sure. it. So, I mean, okay, there's, there's no hard and fast rule, I guess, as far as like, okay, well, what's the, the moral amount of time I can, you know, I can spend yeah. it's, it's going to come down to our individual circumstances and things like that, but it certainly must be examined. I mean, I, I think th- I, this is not in any way, um, you know, an, a judgment of the church or something mm-hmm. like that, but to use sort of an analogy, I was thinking, you know, cause, cause we get asked this sometimes, you know, like uh, how much time is too much time? Like sure. when does it become sinful if I've given, you know, X amount of minutes or hours to social media instead of my duty of state? I think maybe a good analogy to, to compare is, you know, like the, the church has held for centuries um, the rule of, you know, no, sar- no unnecessary servile work on Sundays. Okay. And one of, the, one of the ways that moral theologians have kind of helped interpret that is that, you know, kind of a general rule of thumb is that two hours of unnecessary servile work on a Sunday or a holy day is when it becomes grave matter, so mortally sinful, okay. which somehow these days has become like two hours allowed. But that, no, sure, that was, yeah. that's, that's not the question. Uh, that, right. or that, that wasn't the actual interpretation. It's, it's when, you, when you hit around that time, you've spent so much time on something that the church has forbidden that it's starting to become grave matter. Well, I, I think that's kind of a, a decent analogy as far as like, you know, yeah. I mean, any time stolen from our duty of state, especially if it's affecting our ability to do it well or what our children need from us is going to be an issue. When does it become something more serious and perhaps grave? Well, maybe we can, you know, start to look at that as sort of a, Interesting. Sort of a, a rule of thumb, D- just an idea. Yeah, yeah. And like sure. I said, it's not a, it's not any sort of, um, uh, magisterial magisterial <laughs> judgment or anything like that but yeah so that, that's the that's the first thing is that i mean everybody i think that's ever used social media knows that they end up spending too much time on it um what i think is worth looking at more closely and not just kind of sweeping under the rug is that um that's not by accident and mm-hmm. so it's it's and it's not going to go away um because it's it's yeah. built into the very nature of the beast and um, it does have perhaps more of a moral connotation than we'd like to admit when it okay. comes to um, not only you know, taking time from my duties, but then again, which is going to be, I guess, kind of the, the second aspect of this is is um, that whole use of our screen, the whole use of the, the news and the entertainment, the noise, I guess, let's say that enters into our mind and just kind of scrambles our ability to focus and just to stay on track and to keep things ordered that's going to have its negative effects on, you know, yeah. my duty of state as well and 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 eh, and sure. keeping order in the home. So that's the addictive quality, I guess. That's the that's okay. that's the first thing and um bad enough already, sure. uh, but it's I guess kind of still just step 1. Okay. Um the next uh the next part uh, to be examined is like okay, what I said is the influential quality. So that um kind of just like what we were talking about in the in the last episode as far as kind of putting ourselves in a state of passivity and receptivity mm-hmm. to the ideas, the culture that comes along with whatever we're listening to or watching. Well, um in this sense we we are being influenced um by this artificial construct and everything that it that it builds up to and is informed by and values. So, I mean, quite frankly, the, the social media world is a, is a superficial world and it's largely based on comparison and self-interest. So like, you know, if, if you kind of automatically, because of the way that it's set up, it'll automatically start you on a train of um, comparing yourself to others, your family to yeah. others, how much fun you're having, um, how you look, you know, sure. your successes. And um, well, that, that's a superficial world. Um, yeah. But the more we enter into that, the more that's going to affect you know how we think and and what we value and and, and what we're looking for in, in ourselves and in our family and things like that. It really is, it really is a world of fad, of brand loyalty, of sure. fashion, and 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 maybe things not quite so explicit as that, but but definitely that world of, of superficial comparison. Um, it pushes uh, the values of, of a materialistic and even a hedonistic world that's completely without God um, as its as its center and as its as its value. And again, like I said, that informs our values. Um, so we we start to think yeah. like how social media thinks, um, just on the basic level of of value and and self worth and, and things like that. 
that in turn can weaken our principles again you know so we were talking about how last time like the the principles of of the person we're listening to can can inform our own principles that we're going to make our own judgments off of but our, our principles is just as far as our goals in life and things like that those are also weakened the more time we spend in this artificial contract uh, construct and the more we kind of let that in and that in turn um before getting into it but just mentioning it uh, that's that's where this relevancy of impure content comes as well i mean that's Okay. That's one of the values of of the world we live sure. in is the sexualized culture, um, and and that's everywhere. Yeah, and maybe in, um, at first it's just you know little snippets here and there or little thumbnails that someone can more or less pass over. But every time something like that enters in, and especially if we don't have a, a good prudential reason for us to be in that state in the first place, what that's doing is it's, it's weakening our moral principles. Kind of breaks down those walls yeah. of of resistance and normalizes something that should not be normalized sure. um so that's all of that kind of together that, that i mean that that's got to be realized that this is what we're exposing ourselves to every time we we kind of walk into this to this world um to to jump right to that then as far as you know the more relevant moral question there is social media i think unbeknownst to at least most of the older uh generation is is absolutely full of pornography um, it's, yeah. it really is in, in, in every one of the social media platforms, pornography is only a few clicks away, whether that means that there's someone's, you know, channel or mm -hmm. feed or storyline that is pornographic in itself, yeah. or whether there are going to be links and different ways to outsource to something that's more explicitly sure. full of pornography. And, and I really mean all of them, even the ones that seem pretty innocent, like Pinterest, you know, sure. it's like, well, we're just going for, you know, costumes and, and, and yeah. baking recipes it's like well sure but there's uh well there's plenty of people that are on pinterest and are posting things on pinterest and that can be available to you or your children that are are absolutely pornographic in every possible sense wow um and it again has to be realized um step back again like i said it, most of it at first especially for a, an older user mm -hmm. and for someone that's not intentionally looking things up most of it's going to be you know kind of quote unquote soft things so it's something that's not too terribly explicit but again that's that starts to kind of weaken our our barrier and 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 makes a new um a new normal right. of a sexualized dress and behavior and right that's, and that's just it and you were you were stressing earlier too that a lot of this is in a certain way accidental meaning even if someone is trying at first to avoid these things that it's kind of inevitable whether through an algorithm or you know, looking at a, a profile that you thought was safe or yep. any number of things. Um, yeah, and, you know, and the algorithm thing is a pretty good point because I, I've had this conversation with, you know, a number of, of parents mm -hmm. and they'll say, Father, you know, I, I've been using Snapchat yeah. and I've been using Instagram. I've never had anything like that suggested to me. And my reply is like, okay, well, are you a 16-year-old boy? Are you an 18-year-old girl? If you're not, um, the algorithm is going to pick up what you're interested in and it's going to suggest whatever normal things you're interested in you know sure. i don't whatever that is and like i said you know, baking recipes yeah. or whatever um if you're a 16 year old boy however or an 18 year old girl or anywhere in between um it's going to pick up on that and it's and it's 100 percent going to be suggesting the things that most 16 year old boys or or teenage girls teenage boys in general are interested in and that's going to be much more on the lines of a pornographic culture or or just explicit pornography um and so that's that's kind yeah. of the reason why it's yeah, like yeah. we just kind of have to realize that it's going to be different for for the different users um so that that's okay that's the influential quality to it okay. i mean it, it has that it has that superficial aspect to it which which has to be kind yep. of has to be officially realized and then it has that that darker immoral quality to it which is which is inescapable i mean it's okay. it really is part of the system um there's been there's been, you know, multiple studies from, you know, groups and, and you know, organizations, websites that are, you know, um, working to give resources to parents to, you know, to protect their children in the digital age. And they've done studies on, you know, um, how, how many clicks does it take to get okay. from Snapchat to an explicit um, yeah. website and in the the worst was something like you know Snapchat was down to like four to six clicks, you know, four to six different you know avenues, wow. and there you are. And what's also kind of troubling about this is that uh, um, it, it, this sort of content might not be covered by whatever sort of you know website browser 
a filter, filter. that you have. Yeah. So uh, you know, a, a lot of parents will say, "Okay, I'm going to do the do the right thing, get a good browser, um, yeah. good filter on my browser, and things like that, so that you know there could be no accidents." But that only does one little part. That might that might do nothing more than just you know block um, particular URLs, yeah. um, particular websites on your browser that you use. But it, it, it doesn't get through the different gateways um, by which you can access immoral things through an app, especially a social media app. Okay. Um, and so again, if you if this is a total surprise to you, well, there, there's a reason why it is so. It's it's yeah. it's um it's kind of an insidious way to um to, to bypass things. Sure. And it's also maybe you'll get to this later, but it's not a static world either. Meaning, right. you know, you can do almost uh, as a parent or as you know an adult or whatever you can do as much as you think you can do, and say, mm -hmm. "Well, I've put this, you know, protection, put this filter on." Um, but th the nature of these things is so ephemeral, and yeah. I mean, it could not to be like over the top, but it can change almost day to day. And I know these software companies try to stay on top of it. You're For always sure. getting you get updates, and you get but. It, you know, it's not the kind of thing I think where you can just sit back and say, okay, I've done, done. I have yeah. a checklist, good to go forever. No, know? it's impossible. Yeah. Yeah, it's impossible. And, and again, that comes down to your one person working with a minority of, you know, maybe even the best yeah. businesses out there to, to try and create an atmosphere of digital safety. Um, but again, you're, you're up against thousands of workers yeah. just in the, just in the social media business. Um, and that's not even we're gonna go go into into great detail or, or length, I guess, when it comes to the pornography business. Sure. And okay. that, that's a multi-billion dollar business. Yeah. Um, and again, thousands of people there. So um, we're we're constantly fighting a defensive battle, and like you said, it, it changes day to day. So okay. yeah, there, there's there's really no good way um, to uh, to safely say that we've we've navigated and locked down the vicissitudes, the 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 yeah. possible exploitations of social media leading us or our children to um to dark avenues it, it's it's impossible it's, okay it, yeah so so it's addicting uh, it has a bad it, it forms us poorly on mm -hmm. the level of influence there's the grave moral dangers involved and yet even that is not that's not all of it. Not all of it, yeah. So we have to, we kind of have to look at the the more ironic side of it too, which is like it's social media, right? So yeah. And it's it's like okay, well, this is you know, it's for the sake of socializing, it's yeah. community, and yeah. that sort of thing. Well, that's obviously kind of the most ironic at all yeah. of, of all of it, because I mean, it's easily recognizable. We're in a we're in a culture of of social breakdown. You know, like everyone knows the example of walking into a restaurant and seeing whole families everyone just looking at their phone or the you know the massive hordes of people walking down the street looking at their phone mm -hmm. and um just this this constant locked into the screen and and one of the main ways that people are locked into the screen are through these social media avenues mm -hmm. and um what social media actually does is is it undermines the reality of social interaction um by artificializing it and then by undermining the different things that are necessary for a true social um, network for our yeah. community, probably Order. for, yeah, sure. uh, for, yeah. Um, so for example, um, you know, for a community to function, mm -hmm. we need to be able to rely on, um, reputation, on mm -hmm. trust, on integrity, on common goodwill, um, on responsibility on you know personal integrity in the sense of you know having to you know uh, face the consequences of not sure. only my actions but my words all of that is easily undermined when you have the mask of social media to protect you from all of those things so it, it on the very basic level it undermines truth mm -hmm. and if you can't have truth then you can't have a reliable um social community uh, that's that's one of the reasons why you know we it's it's an, it's a sin against justice you know to ruin someone's reputation to attack someone's reputation it's it's a sin against justice to tell a lie mm -hmm. it's because these things are against the common good um, but by social media you're given you're not only given the possibility to lie but it's kind of part of the whole thing it's yeah. built into the way that it's designed so for example on you know on snapchat or something you um a, a teenage girl can can doctor up exactly how she wants to look physically on the picture that she posts and she could spend you know hours agonizing over it but then also she has all these capabilities through the app itself to manipulate the image um you know to make mm -hmm. her look more attractive or whatever it is and that's a lie and um <clears throat> it's it's built into the very system of it um, it's 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 by social media that you know we we have this world of of constant 
um, kind of dirt throwing, mud slinging, and dishonesty and and um, you know reputation wrecking. It's because anybody can can come up and say something, make a comment, and and state something as if it's true without having to face the consequences of having an actual conversation with someone or or being told that they're wrong or whatever it is or or you know having to produce evidence. It's just all of that is kind of just. Whoop, pulled out of yeah. pulled out from underneath and what's left is just kind of this shell of what seems like communication and interaction um but is is anything but because there's no actual human personal contact and no necessity and um relevancy of truth underneath it all so, so that's yeah. that's that's ironic because yeah. it's it's supposed to do the opposite at least that's how it's presented right um but but it really is it really is um affecting our our, our social um strings so it, it, it then it becomes like i said kind of like this when it kind of that whole idea of like that continual comparison that leads to lies generally speaking because in order to um to look better yeah or to seem like i'm having fun or to you know to at least be up at the status of what everybody else is doing we all have to post you know what what seems like you know the best image of us sure. or you know the, the best aspects of my family and you know, if, if if you didn't know better and you just kind of glanced through, you know, most of the, the Facebook pages of many families, it's like, wow, these people, they just have it great. Like they're always doing arts and crafts and good looking children and everyone's just perfectly happy. It's like, well, I mean, that's okay. If you want to just take a snapshot of one happy yeah. moment and then and then present it as if that's the reality, that's what you can do. Um, but that's again, that's that's not a way to, to, to build a community that's. That's all it is, is just emphasizing something that's accidental and possibly untrue or at least manipulated. And then uh, and then pretending like that's um, that's that's the constant reality. Yeah. What that leads to already, um, again, it, it, contrary to what a social community is supposed to lead to is isolation and unhappiness. Mm. So the more we're you're, we're up against continual comparison, the more we're kind of having to focus on upping our own image and things like that. The more time we're really just spending on ourselves, and the less likely we are to have any sense of accomplishment or perfection or you know legitimate goodness, because all we have is just this myriad of of people and and, and places happier and better looking than I am, mm. which is unhappiness. <laughs> That's sadness, yeah. uh, and it's it's a. Um, it's very much one of the constant effects. It brings about again, like a you know, a false sense of social connection. You know, it's it's easier and absolutely more absorbing than a real social life. Let's say by absolutely more absorbing, I mean just like getting sucked into it and spending massive sure. amounts of time. And it. it's way easier to do that than to have to go out and you know yeah. deal with other people's imperfections and 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 different opinions and. Um, maybe you know different likes and dislikes sure. as far as what are we going to do like it, it all of that starts to become just work and something that's not necessarily under my control um, mm -hmm. and so what that does is it just kind of like creates this false sense that I yeah I have all my friends and really this 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 digital artificial friendship that I have is much easier and convenient in a sense but far less rewarding and, and it's not it's not building it's not it's not, um, it's not, you know, helping each other out and lifting each other up and dealing and bearing each other's crosses and, and things like that. Um, so that, that's, that is obviously pervading our society as a mm. whole. Um, and, but what's worse is, is it trickles down into even, you know, legitimate groups of friends and, and it starts to become a barrier between them having real friendship, real, you know, yeah. even difficult interactions, which are better for both. Yep. Um, and then it trickles right down into our family life. Um, it, it becomes to be, it, it starts to become, um, you know, a, a semblance, but a replacement for a, a le legitimate family interaction, a legitimate family time. In a sense, social media in, in that sense could be called a replacement of culture. It's sure. a replacement of how we do things here in our community. Um, and it and it's not only replaces culture on the local level, but it really kind of um, blows out the whole playing field of culture across across the world because it just kind of reduces everybody to having to you know kind of follow the same interests mm -hmm. have the same appearances have the same you know kind of social sure. status sure. um and that's it, 
it's insidious. I mean, that, yeah. that's awful if you think about it. I mean, it, it. It's this is what this is built into human nature. The fact that you know, it's very Thomistic teaching that man is social by nature. I mean, we need it. Mm -hmm. We need it not only to survive from our youngest years, but we need it for our perfection. And if you take away that whole aspect of our nature and and put it onto a an artificial and superficial digital replacement, um, we're all going to be limping because of that. And and it's, and it's no sense that it, I mean it's it's no surprise rather that uh, you know that we're we're faced with a culture of a very individualistic, unhappy, and selfish people. Yeah, and it's what it's kind of what it's what it's all yeah. leading to. So that that to me is kind of the, it's the worst it's the worst aspect of all that it creates selfishness it creates self absorption even if that's even if that's not the point both because it's empowering yeah. um, you know you have this sense that you can control um, how people think of you yeah. and, and 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 you know your the present presentation of your likes and your talents and things like that you have that that power over to it. Um, and you have that ability to manipulate, um, you know, your image in, in all the different ways. This becomes your world. You know, this is your universe in mm -hmm. a sense that you have the the power over. All of your judgments are what stands supreme, just based on your own authority. Um, and that's why there's, you know, you could be nasty and be without yeah. empathy, and and it and doesn't even feel like you're, you know, you feel like you're justified in doing so because, well, this is your universe. Sure. Um, and but all of that ultimately is that it's selfishness. It, it's it's a it's a huge problem. Wasting time obviously is a problem, but this this reduction of our social life basically to our own belly button that's that's a much bigger problem even. And, and it is again, it's a, it's a moral question because if it's affecting our duty of state, not only you know to our our, our family but to our society by what I'm allowing yeah. this to you know happen to me. Um, but then it just it creates a world of of which there's a value that he, that becomes more important to us than a true and internal value. You know, the state yeah. of my soul, my yeah. actual goodness, which is practice of virtue and and progress in my spiritual life. Mm -hmm. You put that all, you know, this whole idea in context with our eternal salvation. You judge it all on charity, and that's when that's when it. Yeah. It's scary, you know. It's, yeah. At some point, we, you know, the 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 question of the church is always being posed to us. You know, like, well, when you die and you you face your particular judgment, the question that's going to be asked is, "What did you do with the time that I have given you?" Yeah. Well, I spent a lot of it on myself. Is kind of what it comes down to. So that's, I think that's the, that's the. In a nutshell, I yeah. guess, just kind of burning through it. Th th those are the main aspects that we would call, you know, moral, morally relevant. <laughs> yeah. Negative impact. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so again, we've uh, you've laid out, uh, yeah, a little over half an hour already. A few, a few aspects. Any num any of them on their own, theoretically, would be enough to have a serious conversation, or at least uh, make us pause or hesitate before we use or allow these kinds of things to be used and yet um you know you you're framing this all in the context of a of a moral question and, mm -hmm. and there is um you've already spoken or alluded to the fact that there's there's yet a, a greater moral question um involved here but it's it really it's not entirely separate from from all of these things right these right. aren't like they're not neat boxes that are disconnected from one right. another so it's the, fluid the, yeah yeah the the addictive side of it ties into the uh the breakdown of social cohesion and the lack of even natural virtue mm -hmm. which just leads... as much as it does to our own you know psychological balance and yeah that, which yeah. which means it's a very short road to uh pornography or other grave moral evils right. so i know we're going to be we're going to be tackling that in a much more comprehensive way in the next episode. But for now, um, what would you say about that as far as, you know, putting this all in perspective for people when they're, mm -hmm. when they're trying to analyze social media, how would you balance or how would you, um, yeah, how would you tell people that they should look at, let's say the, beyond the obvious, the hierarchy of these, these aspects of social media? Mm -hmm. Okay. I think we could put it down into to kind of three. Okay again, kind of three kind of questions that we want to ask ourselves about it. Um, because this is, okay, we're, we're going to try and do our best to examine our conscience and come mm -hmm. up with some sort of moral principle. Sure. Um, so the first one is um, we, we have to weigh, to gauge um, 
you know, the likely negative outcome on our, on our own psychological stability, our own peace of soul, our own values, um, perhaps, um, and then the effect that it has on our duty of state, we have to weigh all of that against the possible benefit that we can get from this thing. Mm -hmm. And so I don't have to pretend to, again, be the magisterial teaching yeah. here. I can just present to you an abstract moral principle that says, you know, to the degree that we allow a possible harmful influence into ourself without due cause, to that degree, is it already an occasion of sin? And if that is foreseen, is a sin in and of itself? Okay. So apply that then to all of our own, you know, everyone has to apply that to their own particular sure. circumstances. These are the possible negative um, effects that I can that I can be affected by. And um, it's just skipping right to the second one because it's very closely connected to that. The main possible mm -hmm. um, effect that I, I have to look at is, is the relevancy and then the quasi inevitability of being exposed to grave temptation. Um, so all those, you know, the social and personal effects, that's all one part of the thing that I have to weigh as far as, is this worth it? Yeah. But then the second thing that we have to ask ourselves as far as, is this worth it? Is, is this, is this worth, um, you know, the, the quasi inevitability of, of being exposed to something that's so, so difficulty, uh, difficult, mm, so difficult to, uh, to get around, be, meaning that the temptations that come with, uh, with explicit mm -hmm. content, um, we have to ask, is, is it worth it? To, to possibly yeah. be allowed to to be um, to expose to that, and again, I'm not I'm not trying to to pitch that as um, you know an automatic catch twenty two. There's just no way around it because yeah. even though that sounds like it, there's there could never be a, a good reason. Yeah, it's not true. I mean, we could say that accessing the internet at all, you know, or, or some people say, "Follow well, you walk into Walmart and you're exposing mm -hmm. yourself to the possibility of grave temptation." That's true. Um, to some degree, and yet we continue to do it because it's reasonable for us to do so. You know, we need to buy groceries, mm -hmm. or I need to buy something online, or I need to, you know, whatever it is, or even something less than an absolute need. We can still get to the point where we gauge, you know, well, there is a slight possibility. I've done everything I could as far as filtering and accountability goes, and there is still the the hypothetical possibility. But you know, how I use my my apps and how I use my device, I, I've done everything I can, and I have a legitimate reason. I'm going to be trying to buy yeah. a car or something like that. Okay, in that context, it, it is it is possible. So I'm I'm not saying that it's yeah. the, the the conclusion. I'm not trying to lead everyone to the conclusion that it's impossible for you to use this morally. But what I am saying is that um, the the moral question does have to be much more precise than we often okay. let it be. Because um, most often the the cause is just you know well I like I like to stay in touch with my friends. Yeah. I like to share pictures and videos. I like to just be able to distract myself with something uh, for a time. Um, if you weigh those possible benefits with all that likelihood of negative effect, right. does that still weigh, does that still you know equal out? Really, what I'm asking. Well, it's it's almost like you're putting the burden of proof on us to do an examination of conscience and say, look, if if you're not aware of these evils and realities, mm -hmm. here they are, mm -hmm. fairly objective. So, learn about them or acknowledge them, and then you almost have to make. I mean, all of us, we all, you basically have to make an argument that. I have to do it in spite of right. these things. And therefore, if I do have to do it in spite of those things, I still have to <clears throat> yeah. do the extra work sure. um, to do it as prudently as I can. Sure. You know, so it's like, uh, well, I might have to buy a car on Facebook Marketplace. Yeah. But I don't have to, you know, right. <laughs> spend the next two hours, you know, looking at everybody else, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Sure. Yeah, yeah. And and I guess the other thing, so you're absolutely right. That That is what I'm, I'm, I'm saying. I mean, it, the burden is on us not only to, to gauge the morality and the prudence of uh, of us using these things, um, but also to um, you know to do the to do the extra work to um, you know to, to make it as, as sure. prudent as we, as we possibly can. But I'm also just trying to point out, like you know, I I, I would it, it more often comes across my plate as a priest where people think that this is their problem. You know, I'm I'm just oh. I, for some reason I just have such a hard time putting my phone down. And I'm just trying to make the point. This isn't your problem. Yeah. In a, in a, this is our problem. Yeah. This is this is a, a very intelligently designed yeah. um, machine in, in all the possible senses of the world yeah. that knows how to exploit our weaknesses. And so it, it's not just you. Um, it, it's all of us. And and 
we all have to to yeah. to, to to bear that burden then back into our own moral yeah. spheres and and make a decision on it so the that's um that's that's that part. The the okay. third thing that I I'm, I was going to mention as far mm-hmm. as um kind of breaking it up into our you know big yes. moral questions is uh, I I think we really have to look at this whole idea in particular as applied to our children. Okay. Um because it becomes much more relevant, I would say. Um and 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 much more dangerous uh, because of the effects it has. And and even we could say explicitly that it is more dangerous for young girls especially i mean everyone's going to be affected mm-hmm. by this um in particular and when we talk about um pornography we're going to talk about how that is most dangerous to young boys in particular mm-hmm. um but i would i would make the claim that social media is as dangerous and even as damaging for a young girl as pornography is for a young boy okay um and the reason i think that is okay kind of kind of manifold sure um really what it comes down to the the basis of that claim is that um this whole kind of social part of it is is very well designed um to exploit the particular insecurities of an adolescent woman of of a girl Mm. um and uh and, and it it sucks them in in a way that um kind of takes advantage of the normal things that a young woman has to go through, especially as, as she's growing up. Um, to kind of just give a couple examples of this, um, basically what we're gonna say is that social media is, is being these days directly linked to the main problems that we're seeing in just the psychological health and the moral health of teenage girls in our, in our, in our world society. And, okay. and that doesn't exclude our own circles. Okay. Um, so, um, think of, think of a girl having a social media account. Think of that as kind of like she's being, she's being allowed to go to a a public school, let's say, or some sort of public event. Mm -hmm. Um, this is just an analogy, just an image to kind of just paint what I'm trying to say. Everybody in this place is impossibly beautiful. Um, and especially kind of like impossibly sexually attractive. And at the same time, um, everyone's allowed to say whatever they want with no consequences. And, and there's this overarching demand that she live up to the expectations of all these people around her. Okay. So put yourself back, um, well, not you, but put, I mean, for any of us, put ourselves back in the insecurities of high school, but especially for a woman. And there's already just this demand for being, um, you know, up on the same social mm-hmm. status as everybody else, of, of being likable and all these things, and you amplify that both with disordered likability um, and then um, unreasonable demands for social status, and you have a young brain that is already struggling to navigate all of these um, these kind of demands, completely susceptible to the addictive quality of the social media. Uh, yeah. technology absolutely less capable of making long-term judgments and judgments that reflect objectively about herself and, and her status and um you're going to end up with someone that that's most likely going to be constantly comparing herself to new standards of self-esteem that are completely disordered immoral and um but almost impossible to ignore um it sounds it, it sounds almost it's too bad to believe but this really is the cause of um, kind of this pandemic we're seeing of depressed young teenage girls, um, uh, uh, you know, kind of universally. So uh, mm. for just, I mean, for example, um, there, there's been a whole, a whole ton of studies done on, like I, I mentioned, the the direct causal link between social media and teen mental health. Mm-hmm. So, for example, um, a couple of years ago, the CDC statistics, which are released every year, linked um, or stated that the suicide rate for girls aged 10 to 14 had the largest percentage increase, which was over 200 percent during the time period immediately following the dawn of social media. So it tripled in numbers from 1999 to 2014. Okay. Um, according to the Natural Center for Injury Prevention, suicide is now the second leading cause of death for ages 10 to 24, and especially girls. Hmm. So that means that more teenagers and young adults die from suicide than from cancer, 
heart disease, AIDS, birth defects, stroke, pneumonia, influenza, and chronic lung disease combined. Wow. And that's, I mean, that's a stat to scare us, yeah. obviously. Yeah. And what is, what is it that could possibly be linking all these things? Well, multiple study, studies, like I said, they show this clear link between low self-esteem and this cyberbullying, this, this shaming, self-harm, suicide world that is okay. the result of this impossible sexualized comparison world and status demands of social media. So that's that's just, let's say, the result of the comparison aspect and this kind of like social thing. But the okay. other problem is that um, within the social media networks, there are whole, there are whole worlds and universes for for our children to come across that are more than willing to accept them in and and kind of like support their insecurities and and make them feel included. So, for example, a girl might be thinking, "Well, I'm I'm very depressed. I don't get along with my parents." Well there's whole networks of, of teenagers that think exactly the same way. And what are they what are they posting about? All the ways that they cope with being misunderstood, mm. um, with being judged and being alienated from their families. And, and this gives rise to just this, this pandemic of self-harm and um, you know, eating, eating dis disorders and, and things like that. Uh, it's, it's truly catastrophic and it is, it's there, it's all over the place. It's, it's, um, it's, or a, another example, let's say is, you know, a, a young, a young person might, might have, you know, doubts and questions because they're, you know, kind of getting fed this, this, this idea that's largely present in social media, this whole, this whole craziness of, of gender misidentity and things like that. Well, again, for a young mind that doesn't necessarily have the ability to make you know, rational judgments and things about these things, they might start asking, well, if they have the slightest little bit of inclination <clears throat> um, towards something that might be slightly considered gender misidentification, there's a whole world there of people that are supporting you and and, yeah. and, and, and telling you that, yeah, no, you're, you've been lied to and all these sort of things. It's like, all of a sudden there's this like social, social family that's more supportive and more understanding to you, it seems, than your own family. Yeah. And that's okay. Those are kind of extreme examples, but even just on the basic level of kind of like the you know the the, the friction between adolescent and mm -hmm. parent, what the social media world does is it gives them a universe apart from their parents that understands them, that that affirms their insecurities and even their their misinformed judgments, and then in turn creates this ever widening gap between the youth and their parents or their teachers or sure. the priests or whatever it is. Um, it, it's a, it, it's kind of it's kind of undermining everything. Um, and again, I I don't I, I'm I hope it doesn't sound you know conspiratorial or anything like yeah. this because just because uh, this is not only something that the world at large is reacting against. I mean, do a search and you'll find more than enough studies that are backing up what I'm saying. But this is something that we are experiencing. You know, we're we're seeing in our own okay. circles in our schools the priests. It's something that we talk about often. Like, where is this? Kind of like this this mass insecurity this 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 pandemic of anxiety and self-doubt and then um the more insidious things that 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 follow from that so on the personal level on the effect that that's being suffered social media is a death trap for young people and, and especially young girls that's on the internal level let's say on the external level there's a whole there's a whole nother problem and that is um you in this in this social media world in this universe that doesn't have um legitimate guardrails and protections um what you're doing is is you're 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 creating an open access place where there are children um and no restrictions for else who else is allowed in and what that means is we've created um a a a, a source an endless source of predatorial activity mm. um so there are there are um unfortunately many many people out there in the world that are looking to exploit children especially young girls for disordered intentions and um the easiest way for them to be able to do that is through the anonymity and um the the mask of social media so i i was just i was actually just going through a you know a couple reports and statistics the other day um based on the police reports and uh and and um reports filed to different social media platforms, it's estimated that at any given second, there are somewhere around 500,000 sexual predators on social media right here and right now. 
um, that statistic is based off of, you know, just kind of just like gauging the, the demographic of, of the different reports and things like that made. Of all the internet related sexual abuse reports, Snapchat came out on top last, last year with 33%. And, and that's, you know, that's, that's something that most people would be completely surprised to learn because isn't Snapchat just, you know, you text, you send pictures mm -hmm. and so, well, yeah, but I mean, it's, it's an open, it's an open-ended, open, open access place. And, and if you, if you open up the, the world to a common denominator, um, you, you've, you've allowed that, that lowest common denominator yeah. to come in. I have here a, um, a post that was made by a, a, the local county sheriff office. So it's just here in Kansas. Yes. Um, and just, just quickly says, moms and dads, if your kid is under 18 and has a smartphone with Snapchat, TikTok, Discord, or a similar nightmare digital cancer application, and if you do not have monitoring software on that phone, throw it straight into a microwave. These applications mentioned and many others like them have zero, and nearly zero benefit for children and maintain in our brutal experience two main user demographics, children and pedophiles slash predators. If you aren't monitoring your child online, someone is. Um, it's, yeah. it, it is insane to get a, another example. So there's, there's a website that I've, I've been able to pull a lot of resources from um, that again, it's, it's one of those like, you know, kind of giving yeah. parents a, a resources and things for digital safety. They made a little team um, to, to just kind of experiment okay. um, <clears throat> how, how relevant this, this danger is. So what they did is they created a fake profile of a 16 year old girl. They found, you know, they kind of compiled a whole bunch of, of pictures, doctored, doctored them up, made them look like, you know, one individual gave her a fake identity name and different likes and interests and things like that. So created just a normal um, yeah. uh, uh, Snapchat profile. And, um, they they sent it live they activated the account and then they started their watch and i i have to, i should have double checked the, the exact time it was something like 37 seconds and the first request for a de direct message came in um from a man asking for further pictures of him, of herself and his profile image was sexually explicit already mm. so that's that's, not, that's something you can't even block like it, it's already there and and then the numbers just went up after that and they've since actually created a team to work with police to to be able to you know to to kind of yeah. expose these people and and get them arrested so again if this is all kind of seeming surprising and unbelievable to us it's because we're just not in that age we're not in the circumstances where you know these sort of materials will be suggested to us these sort of people will be contacting us or whatever it is but any teenage girl, even even in our any of our the best of our families, all they need to be is a human being with basic human insecurities, and they're going to be susceptible, um, you know, to these problems. Uh, it, it's it's not a bad will, it, yeah. is what I'm saying. It, yeah. It's it's just kind of an inevitable part of the nature. Um, what's interesting too is that you know as damaging as both of these things are um kind of the internal damage to their to their psyche to their moral quality to their to their self-esteem and as dangerous as you know perhaps sexual predator activity could be it, 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 talking to you know multiple different teenagers what, what, what's very surprising is that often they'll tell you that they do hate it they they hate mm. the pressure they hate yeah they they hate all the comparison they hate the problems and then if you ask well then why don't you just get rid of it they say well well then i would feel isolated you know th then i'd feel like yeah. I, I'd, I'd be um yeah i'd be missing out so that that's what i mean by it's it's a death trap it's it has it, there's there's simply nothing good to redeem it and a lot of bad things um uh to to condemn it this, this insane this inhuman social pressure the predomination of the lowest common denominator the influence of a materialistic sexualized counterculture um the traps of self of self-absorption and the inevitability of being exposed to pornography these are the things that when i say our third yeah. ma main relevant moral issue is the protection of our children these ones have to be, you know, very strongly considered to the point where, okay, again, if I'm going to pose the syllogism of a magisterial yeah. teaching or a moral teaching, you know, it's it's morally wrong to expose your children, you know, to something that could have a gravely negative yeah. impact on their soul without the most severe and gravest proportionate reasons to do so. Um, I 
personally cannot find a grave and proportionate reason to do so. And so to allow a child, you know, to have open access to social media, as simple as that, um, seems according to that moral yeah. principle, just intrinsically gravely sinful. Yeah. It, it, it can't be justified. I was going to follow up with your question, well, my question earlier, which is in light of everything you've just said, uh, yeah, what, I mean, why is there even a discussion then of, of you know, what, what proportional means would possibly be mm -hmm. uh, sufficiently grave to balance out right. what you mentioned. Yeah. Um, not saying there isn't one, but it, I can't that's find the one kind for of children. question that comes to mind. <laughs> yeah, uh, right. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, I would say, I mean, to just, you know, to try and be as fair and, and objective as possible, I would say that, you know, for adults, if, if, and we're going to talk about, correct me if I'm wrong, but we're going to talk about all the practical ways to, that, yeah. you know, use our technology as yes. safely and prudently as possible. So we'll, we'll get into this. But just to be as fair as possible, I, I, I could see that it, it being possible that, you know, like a, like a family shared, you know, between sure. parents, we have, a, we have a Facebook account, we use it for these particular sure. reasons, um, and we don't use it for any other reason, and we keep each other accountable, we absolutely don't let the children on it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Like that sort of scenario can, sure. can very well be entertained. Um, but for everything else, I mean, the conclusion is that it's imprudent at best intrinsically. Yeah. And, you know, to allow something without due proportion to continue that's imprudent is already immoral. But it's overuse. It's bad use, um, which is which is um, almost inevitable because of its addictive nature is 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 much more than just imprudent. And and again, for for children's and adolescents to have just open access to that, it, it's it's definitely immoral. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's the rant, yeah. Jim. That's no, it's good. Uh, thank you, Father. I think um, I think that wraps up our our episode on social media. But the next episode, we will get into, um, yeah, the topic of pornography, and that mm -hmm. is much more than just social media. That's right. the the general topic to to be confronted in all of its yep yep yeah, ugliness. Not so. a pleasant one, but some, no, certainly but something that has one. to be looked at. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Father. Thank you. Thank you.